Hello physics enthusiasts, today I'm going to talk about the neutrino oscillation. Though the neutrino oscillation had not been discussed for a long while, in 2015, the Nobel Prize was actually awarded for the discovery of the neutrino oscillations and thus proved that the neutrinos have masses. Now, why are we so interested on the neutrino oscillation? It is because it can give an answer to two big problems that we have observed before. The first one is the solar neutrino problem that the sun actually produces a huge amount of the electron neutrinos However, what we observed is less than what we expected. The second is the atmospheric neutrino problem that when the cosmic ray hits the atmosphere, it will actually produce the muon neutrino and electron neutrino at a ratio of 2 to 1. However, what we observed is 1 to 1. To have a full understanding on the neutrino oscillation, we first need to know what is the neutrino and what are the neutrino flavors. So in a physical world, we have four fundamental interactions, the gravitational interaction, the electromagnetic interaction, the strong interaction, and the weak interaction. And the neutrinos, which are extremely light and neutral, actually fall into the category of the weak interaction. This weak doesn't mean that it is weak in strength, but it is only effective in the subatomic existence. Now, what is so special about the neutrino is that they can never be directly detected, and they can only be detected through their weak interactions. The neutrinos also have flavors that can only be distinguished by the charged lepton produced in the charged current weak in action. You might find this concept kind of confusing, so here are the examples. The neutrino is being produced along with a charged lepton, in this case a positron. It then involves in an interaction to produce this electron. In this case, although we cannot really directly observe this neutrino, we know that it exists such that this whole interaction is possible. The neutrino also have a flavor, which is a neutrino state produced along with a charged lepton. For example, if this interaction exists, then this neutrino will have the muon or electron flavor at the same time. But in reality, we cannot observe this interaction, and thus it indirectly proves that the neutrinos have different kinds of flavors. So based on the existing charged lepton, we know that there should exist the electron neutrino, muon neutrino, and tau neutrino. Now, what is the neutrino oscillation then? It is basically a phenomenon that the neutrino undergoes the flavor transition during the propagation over large distances. Thanks to the quantum mechanic and the Schrodinger's cat, we know that everything can be written in terms of states. Same as the Schrodinger's cat can be in a state of death or alive, the neutrinos are also in a state of a mixture of masses. We can therefore describe the state of the electron, muon, and tau neutrino, which we call the weak iron state, into a mixture of state from the free particle Hamiltonian, which we call the mass iron state 1, 2, and 3. The two iron states are related by the so-called PMNS matrix. This unitary matrix consists of the fundamental parameters of the lepton flavor sector in the standard model. Now, for example, we want to get the state of the electron neutrino when time is zero, when we can express it into this mathematical format. Since the mass ion states are the stationary states of the free particle Hamiltonian, it will satisfy this equation. Now, when the time is not equal to zero but to some propagated distance, we can then make use of the solution of the plane wave for each mass ion state, which is an exponential term. This phase term is in four vector notation, and thus, by using the energy momentum relation and some conversion and assumption that the speed of light is one and the mass of the neutrino is much smaller than the momentum. We can then express the phase term into this elegant format related to the neutrino mass. By making use of the unitary property of the PMNS matrix, the weak iron states of the electron neutrino can then be expressed into this format. Now, when you consider, for example, from electron neutrino transit to the muon neutrino, you just need to take the square of the initial and the final state, and this is your final result. The reason why we say that the neutrino oscillation can prove that the neutrinos have masses is because if the neutrino don't have masses, then the phase term will be zero and therefore the probability will be zero and we will have no neutrino oscillation. However, if the neutrino oscillation exists, then the phase term is not equal to zero and therefore the neutrinos have masses. And the masses are not the same for each flavor. Now let's look back to the solar neutrino problem that we observed less electron neutrino than we expected. Consider the probability of the electron neutrino transit into the electron neutrino after playing with trigonometric identity stuff, you will get this equation, where the delta is the mass difference of the neutrinos. So here you can see that the neutrino oscillation probability depends on the square of the mass difference of the neutrinos. By knowing two of the mass hierarchy is already enough in this case, however one cannot really distinguish which of the relation is indeed correct. This is the so-called hierarchy problem. 
Anyway, one can plot out the survival probability of the electron neutrino in terms of the log distance. You can see that originally you have 100% of the electron neutrino. In the half of the oxidation length, you get 0% of the electron neutrino. When the neutrino goes by to a further large distance, you get 50% of the electron neutrino. You can calculate the oscillation probability in all other cases as well by assuming that the PM and its matrix is real. However, in reality, we are not sure and we want to measure whether the PM and its matrix is real because if it is not real, then the CP violation is allowed in the neutrino oscillation of the standard model and thus give us a hint on why we have more matter than the antimatter nowadays in our universe. Here I will give you a full explanation on this point. Now, if the T, CP, and CPT are conserved in a neutrino oscillation, then these three relations are valid. Now, if the PMNS matrix is not real, then T will be validated. Since it is believed that all local Lorentz invariance quantum field theories are invariants on the CPT symmetry, if T is validated, CP will also be validated unless the PMNS matrix is real. Therefore, we are safe to say that if there's this imaginary component inside the PMNS matrix, then the CP violation is allowed in the neutrino oscillation of the standard model. Now, let's go deeper to the PMNS matrix. The construction of that is actually based on the experimental result. It is a 3x3 three three matrix with 9 complex entries which gives 18 degrees of freedom. Since it has to be unitary in the standard model framework, you have 9 constraints and therefore 9 degrees of freedom. The real part of the matrix can be represented by an orthogonal rotation matrix with 3 degrees of freedom and the complex part has originally six exponential complex phases that can be absorbed into one global complex phase term. This reduces the total degrees of freedom of the PMNS matrix to four. Of course, there are other constructions of this PMNS matrix, but this one I've shown is kind of the most standard one in most of the textbooks. Now let's move on to the neutrino experiment. The goal of different neutrino experiments are to find out the um, two value for the mass hierarchy and the four value inside the PMNS matrix. For example, physicists have built log tunnels with near and far detectors such that they can determine the mass hierarchy and PMNS matrix value based on the survival probability of the target neutrino by comparing the ratio before and after the oscillation. However, so far we have no knowledge about the CP violating term delta. So here is a small summary. The neutrinos have flavors. The neutrino oscillation allows the neutrino flavor transition during the propagation over the distance. It also allows the neutrinos to have masses. However, one cannot really distinguish the mass hierarchy among the neutrinos. We also want to find out the complex phase term inside the PMNS matrix because it will allow the CP violation in the neutrino oscillation of the standard model, which can give us a hint on why we have more matter than the antimatter nowadays in our universe. So I hope you like this topic. Bye!